Hi, it's Teardown Tuesday again, and we've got some vintage computer tech teardown for you. It's the Handyfax 1000. <laughs> Check it out. It is a PDA, personal digital assistant, if you remember those, slash fax machine. Um, yes, it's an actual fax machine that you hook up to your phone, and we'll take a look at it. It's about 1995 vintage, I think, mid 90s, right in the era when those uh, PDAs, like the Palm Pilots and that, were just starting to take off. And, you know, they were going to be the next big thing before, you know, smartphones and stuff like that. Everyone had a PDA, but they're gone the way of the dodo. The smartphones absolutely killed them. And this is one of the relics from the era, the Handyfax. 1000 I think it's also sold as the Smith Corona something or other and it had a very short life I don't think it actually sold at all don't ask me how I got it I have no idea um, but I've had it uh, lying around since then and I thought it'd be interesting to see what's inside it I'm expecting some um, ancient uh, processor technology and stuff like that could be interesting let's check it out Let's have a look at the box. It's a cordless fax organizer, 256K of memory, which was huge uh, back in the mid 90s for one of these uh, pocket organizer slash uh, PDAs. It's compact, pocket size. Hmm, don't know about that. Lightweight, 370 grams. F can hold 5,000 names in its phone look. Uh, book, it's got a chronological fax log. Woo, you can search. It's got the built in acoustic coupler modem there which goes directly over your phone it's also got an rj11 uh, jack on it i believe so you can plug directly in powerful 9600 board transmission oh now we're talking auto dialer none of this having to dial your own number rubbish and a built-in fax cover sheet fantastic and it connects to your pc i have no idea why you would want to send a fax on the go like that that's probably why the thing didn't uh, sell at all i don't think it was just a you know, sounded great on paper in the marketing meeting. Oh yeah, portable fax machine, great. And we can put the acoustic coupler. It's a triumph of, uh, you know, engineering over practicality. And then this structural video cassette. This is fantastic. Ah, oh, brilliant. We get a quick start guide, operation manual. Oh, 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 I don't know about you, but I'm excited. To quote Big Kev. Let's unbox this thing. Hate unboxings, but woohoo, what do we got here? Ta-da, there it is. And check it out, we still have the sealed VHS video cassette Handyfax 1000 operating instructions, 22 minutes worth in PAL format. That would be absolutely hilarious to watch, I'm sure. <laughs> I love it. All right, let's get pop this sucker out. And ugh, ew, ew. Um, I wish you had uh, touch-o vision on this thing because that is sticky. No, I can't quite lift it. But, but trust me, that rubber on that has really gone all sticky and ugh, yucky. Let me give it a smell. Oh, woo! It really does have that old sort of rotted product rubbery smell. Ugh, awful. Handyfax HF 1000, six volt DC, draws 150 milliamps from the external supply. Patent pending, of course, you've got to patent the thing. And uh, serial number, there it is. There's our uh, AAA batteries, runs off four AAA batteries. And, uh, I guess I could put some batteries in and see if it powers up, and that's probably the CR2032 uh, replacement cell. So let's pop it open. Oh, look at that. Handyfax 1000, 256K. Fantastic. Put some batteries in this thing, see if it powers on. Does it? No. No. It's completely dead, I'm afraid. It's a loser. Ah, well. Who cares? We want to see what's inside this sucker. So let's crack it open. Fingers are all sticky. This is really the most disgusting product I've ever handled. Ugh. 
Let's crack this thing open. I've taken the screws off and wet. Yep. Holy, look at that. Oh, we have some bodginess. This is absolutely incredible. Check out the bodge board in there and all the mod wiring. Look at that. Absolutely horrid. Oh my goodness. This is a consumer bit of gear. Unbelievable. This company obviously, you know, rushed this thing to market. It looks like they've put in this second board here with the insulation tape on the back there as a complete bodge. And I love it how there's a past sticker on there sort of underneath all the other bodge wires like it passed and then they thought oh no look we've, we've got, to, got to bodge this thing up maybe to meet some sort of uh, local telecoms requirement or uh, something to that effect because um, Really, you know, it looks like it connects into the RJ11 there, directly into the phone socket, straight into this, this board, which has what looks like a bridge rectifier there with those diodes. And then we've got some opto couplers and all this bodge stuff going over to these surface mount pads down in here. I've, I don't think I've ever seen anything that horrible in a bit of consumer gear before. Wow, look at this, really. We've got a couple of tantalums mounted edge on uh, there so they can't even they couldn't even get the you know the bodge PCB right so they've bodged the bodge PCB go figure and they've got this mod wire going out over here directly onto these uh, surface mount pads over here it's just ah oh, what a horror show really that is awful and to all you young whippersnappers out there wondering what is one of these acoustic couplers, acoustic coupler modem. Well, look, you flip this, you pop it out, and we've got a speaker there, and we've got a microphone there, and what do you do? You hook it up to your phone. This is a phone, kids. Before we had mobile phones, you had to go to a phone booth. You remember those, you know, that Superman changed in? And uh, you could actually um, hook up your computer via an acoustic coupler without having to have a direct phone line um, hookup. It, it was very slow, it was horribly unreliable, but it, you know, if you only wanted to send things at 300 bits per second or something, it'd do the job. So it'd go across, the, the speaker would go across the uh, mouthpiece here and this microphone would go onto this speaker. So it would sit on there like that and you could transmit and receive data via any phone without having to have a data connection. Magic! That's how it was done in the old days. So what we've got here on this uh, top board is clearly the um, just the interface uh, circuitry for the uh, fax slash phone slash acoustic coupler uh, modem interface. And you'll notice we've got a got a micro switch here. I'm uh, not sure what that's doing. I think it's to detect that the uh, case has been opened. Perhaps I can't see. Oh no, it probably detects that the. Uh, I think that's just about where the uh, battery cover comes in. So maybe that's designed to, yeah, yeah, that cover's got a little, that notch on, on the cover there, it has a little tab on it. So it looks like it detects whether or not that is closed. Eh, don't know why they're gonna uh, bother, why they bothered to do that, but hey, go figure. And uh, we've got some of the, uh, just the battery terminals here, crustily soldered on. We've got, looks like, you know, a couple of diodes, another bodge diode on there. Oh man, this is, this is really quite horrid. Don't like it at all. Bit of electrical tape here. Maybe, is that, no, what's that? That's just, you know, I thought there was some sort of, maybe some sort of connection ribbon cable or something, but no, there's not. It's just a uh, metal bracket. They just <laughs> folded that <laughs> some, <laughs> electrical tape over that it's hilarious oh man anyway there's got to be a uh, processor board in here in fact given that it's uh, under the keys that there, there's not much thickness left there on the keyboard I think the uh, 
and there's a lot of thickness left in there all the processor is um clearly under the display here which uh makes sense and then they only have to have some uh, uh some small connections going over for that uh keypad on this other side which no doubt uh, goes through the hinge here somewhere actually it just occurred to me what that micro switch might be it might uh, disable all the phone uh, stuff if you once you uh, once you remove that battery cover and then uh, disconnect those batteries because technically if you got this thing hooked up to the uh, phone line up there you don't want people replacing the batteries while it's hooked into the phone line and they can potentially get zapped or uh, you know lightning could strike them you know goodness knows what it's probably some you know um, safety interlock thing to ensure that uh, it's disconnected from the phone when you're replacing the batteries and there it is you can see the flat flex cable there about 20 odd ways or something like that connecting uh, mostly the uh, keyboard but uh, also the, the uh, data uh, fax lines as well through to all the processor which is up in the top half in here and it's all it's the, the oh the hinge is all really badly designed the clumsy very clumsy and uh, it's, it's it got all the hallmarks of being rushed to market this thing it really does you can just you know imagine that marketing meeting you know or they did or it's a startup or something like that and they got their venture capital funding and they have to really push something out the door within uh, you know nine months from uh, from getting all their uh, capital investment to something out the door because it's by Handyfax uh, Corporation I think it is what is it Handyfax yeah Handyfax Corp so obviously they, uh, I think they probably just uh, set up that company, probably a startup, just to do this uh, fax machine. <laughs> I'm sure there's a lot of people who lost their money on that one. Because you've got to remember that around that mid-90s there, that's when the web uh, started to uh, take off an email and things like that. So really, designing a fax machine around that point, and, you know, PDAs only lasted oh mate you know five years tops or something in terms of uh pdas maybe it was a little bit uh longer than that but really um you know email just you know took over once once the web came along and everyone started to get a proper internet con connection and an email address it's just you know uh, old-fashioned uh, fax machines were still you know people still use fax machines these days of course it's still a valuable um well it's not valuable as it used to be but still um you know an essential uh business tool for a lot of businesses to send that paper fax but uh, probably no window there at all with uh hindsight i'm not sure how many of these things were um, actually sold and used but I believe uh, through hearsay that it, it basically was a, a complete uh, flop and uh, didn't do anything at all anyway that's not terribly uh, surprising because you know where are PDAs these days let alone a handheld fax machine go figure anyway I reckon we're going to get some uh, screws under those uh, little rubber plugs there and we'll be able to take off that uh, front panel that'll just lift right off and we'll find a processor board and i'm expecting you know maybe one of the uh, intel processors like an 80c88 or something it'll be one of those uh, cmos uh, versions perhaps something like that um i don't expect uh, anything fancy it would have used just off the shelf uh, stuff and by the way our date code on the board here that's the manufacturing date that would have been put on there by the uh, bare board manufacturer so the 32nd week in uh, 1994 so uh you know there would have been uh, several weeks on top of that before they load the components and ship it out so you know we're probably talking the uh you know the 40th week uh 94 vintage so we're almost 95 there but uh, who knows this may have been sold in 95 96 you just don't know probably old stock maybe they only did the one run of them and uh you know based on the bodge and things like that that's um not surprising maybe you know it's an early board they couldn't be bothered re-spinning it so oh yeah six months later let's just hack it together with this mod board and get the thing to market six or nine months later and here we have the lcd pcb it tells you so we've got a uh, a chip on board uh, device here we've got some uh, ram there and another bodge look at that a dip with the legs splayed out this is brilliant stuff oh well if you're gonna bodge it bodge it all the way don't go 
don't go by halves. This is terrific. And there you go, there's some quality bodging right there. That's just brilliant. I love it. And what is it? It's a, uh, it's a PAL. It's a 16V8 PAL device. <laughs> there you go. Not only is it a PAL device, but they've splayed it onto the board like that. Ah, oh, that is just atrocious. You've got to be kidding me. Bodge wire in there, of course. And, uh, oh man, this is terrible. There's a 32 kilohertz crystal, which isn't uh, soldered or... Uh, held down with any gunk and they've done that uh, not once but uh, twice over here it's a cardinal sin that one i love to see how long these things would have uh, survived out there i'll peel off that sticker and see what's under there there you go it's a yamaha ytm 401 your guess is as good as mine and quite frankly i couldn't care less what it is well it looks like there's actually not going to be anything on the bottom of this uh, board because that's uh, they're going to have uh, the membrane for the uh, keys under there, and uh, they're going to have the LCD as well. Well, our uh, chip on board, our black uh, blob there is uh, clearly the processor, because it is hooked up to 228K uh, SRAMs, which gives us our advertised uh, 256K, and it's also hooked up to a, uh, once you can see all the parallel buses going straight through there, so they're obviously uh, sharing the common address and uh, data lines and you can see the 27C256 uh, uh, ROM there so that would uh, that would be the program memory and uh, that's it so I'm quite disappointed that I'm really considering the um, the bodginess and the off-the-shelf um, ness of the rest of it if that's a word off-the-shelfness um, then this uh, chip on board is um, I'm a little bit uh, I'm surprised that they've gone with that there. You want to know what the funny thing is? This steaming pile of modified dog turd is Ostel approved. It's got the big tick. No worries. Nothing escapes the wrath of modification in this thing. Look at that 0805 resistor there just <laughs> propped up on its side and bridged across. Those two things there. Hilarious. Bastard. I took the black electrical tape along the top off. And here we go. Copyright of Capricorn. Electronics! Ha! Hang your head in shame! This is terrible! So unfortunately with that processor your guess is as good as mine. Not that it uh, matters at all much really. So there you go, that's inside the Handyfax 1000. A uh, very unusual relic from the uh, 19, mid 1990s or 95 or thereabouts. I did a quick uh, Google on uh, Handyfax Corp and uh, Handyfax Australia actually uh, popped up on some database somewhere and it was delisted in January of 95. Um, go figure. So this is, <laughs> I'm not sure uh, how many of these they sold if anyone ever used the damn things. If you do know any uh, further info on this thing, let me know. But yeah, what a pile of <laughs> dog crap really look at it it's a dog's breakfast it is just that is terrible terrible muriel and uh as australians will uh, get that one so this is a real hilarious example of uh, a product that's been bodged to market to uh, meet the market because probably you know the shareholders were probably screaming oh we need this product to market we need it this month we're going to miss our marketing window and blah 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 and ah oh, well i think a lot of people lost their money on that turd <laughs> i hope you like tear down tuesday and if you do please give it a thumbs up catch you next time